David, quantum computing is becoming quite important in the world to no small degree based on your personal contributions. Uh, I'm not so interested on the applications. Can we factor large numbers and uh, steal money through bank transactions or catch spies? But what it is, fundamentally, and what it possibly can tell us about the nature of reality. That's really why I'm interested in it as well. I'm, I came to this from a physics uh, point of view, not a computation point of view. So um, one of the um, things that really attracts me about the theory of quantum computation is what it tells us about what kind of thing a law of physics is. Uh, it's been a mystery to uh, philosophers and physicists for decades uh, what I think uh, Eugene Wigner called um, the unreasonable effectiveness yes. of mathematics yes. in, in the natural sciences. Um, especially when we realize that the set of computable functions, which are familiar to us, the, the made of things like addition and multiplication and so on, from a mathematician's point of view, they form an infinitesimally tiny mm -hmm, subset sure. of the set of all possible mathematical relationships. And yet, physics is made entirely out of those. And if it weren't, we wouldn't n be able to know any physics. So um, when it became um, more and more obvious that uh, the computation is built into the laws of physics at a fundamental level, a lot of people immediately jump to the conclusion, oh, well, the reason that mathematics is, is useful in the physical sciences is that the world is a computer. And we are just programs running in that computer or something like that. Or we're just a simulation running in a, in a computer. And now, it seems to me that that misses the whole point of the, the lesson of the universality of computation for physics. Because it requires a notion of what is or isn't computable that is outside the physical world. So that it was, it was set by God or something mm -hmm. to be a certain set. And that's why... Uh, our universe only in, uh, instantiates that set of mathematical uh, relationships. Well, then you may, that doesn't solve the problem. You may as well have said that God set up just <laughs> our universe with yeah. those relationships. And Eliminate the middleman. Yes, <laughs> get out, re remove the middleman. So I think the, the real, Im the important lesson of quantum, uh, of, of uh, the universality of computation as revealed by quantum computers to be part of physics is that computers can be built Universal computers can be built within the universe. That is really the amazing thing. Because however the universe was, you could imagine some kind of uh, super computer with, with uh, unknown mathematics that simulated it. But the amazing thing about our universe is that you can make an object, such that w a, a computer that can simulate any physical process. That's what universality is. And this object... Um, the set of all its possible motions, that is the set of all possible programs that could be programmed into it, is, is in a one-one correspondence with the set of all possible motions of anything. Mm -hmm. And that is, a, uh, that is telling us something about the universe from the inside. It's telling us something about what laws of nature actually are. Okay. Uh, now, how does the quantum part help us? Uh, when the theory of computation was first discovered by, by Babbage and then developed by Alan Turing during the 1930s, uh, it wasn't realized that this was a branch of physics at all. Yes. It was invented as a branch of mathematics to study mathematical proofs. And um, the, um, the theory was built up from an, uh, a conjecture that a certain type of uh, abstract object, the Turing machine, uh, could represent all things that, that could be uh, computations. Now, what quantum computers... Uh, and, and then, uh, historically, what happened after that is that people began to worry that the physical world might not be able to instantiate these, these operations perfectly, mm -hmm. and that therefore the, 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 the real world might be a weaker kind of computer than the Turing computer, <laughs> that it might be an idealization. Now, when we studied this more carefully, and, and this is where quantum computers began, begin to come in, uh, we found that not only can a universal computer exist physically, but it's more powerful than a Turing machine. 
And what the mathematicians were doing unconsciously is that they, when they invented these abstract objects, they were applying their intuition about physical objects. They didn't mm. know that that's what they were doing. And because they were applying their intuition about physical objects, they got it wrong. Mm -hmm. they, they thought about computing, right, making marks of squares of paper, <laughs> and then as Feynman uh, remarked, they thought they understood paper. <laughs> but in fact, paper, like everything else, obeys quantum mechanics, and the real computation in the world is, is quantum computation, the, the theory of computation is the theory of quantum computation, and that is a theory of physics. So that means that the theory of computation is irretrievably within physics because of the quantum theory of computation. Now, what is, briefly, the quantum theory of computation? How does that work? How is computation and quantum theory, quantum mechanics, integrated into a quantum theory of computation? Um, a theory of computation within any laws, laws of physics is the theory of how you can use physical objects to represent abstract objects. Right. So you want to uh, represent the, the integers, one, two, three, and you can use physical objects like fingers to say <laughs> that will be one, that's called two, that's called three, and so on. And the computers are ways of um, instantiating abstract objects and their relationships in physical objects and their motion. So <laughs> now, nice. what happens with quantum uh, computers is that we simply take the deepest physical theory. We have quantum theory, and we say, what kind of information processing does quantum theory in general allow, and what does it not allow? And that's the theory of quantum computation. And when you do that, what do you find compared with a classical computer when you make this quantum computer? You find, uh, the, the, you find a number of similarities, and we, we find the reasons why the Turing uh, theory worked as well as it did, and then you find a number of dramatic differences between the, the quantum theory of quantum computers and, and classical computers. Um, the one that's got the most attention is that for certain types of calculation, a quantum computer can perform it exponentially faster mm. than any classical computer. So you could have, uh, the people haven't built quantum computers mm -hmm. yet, but we hope that they soon will. And when, uh, when a quantum computer is built, a small quantum computer with, with a few thousand uh, qubits, that, that's the quantum analog of bits. Compared to the billions of bits in our normal desktop computers uh, yes, or laptops. Yes, uh, or, or even our mobile yeah, phones. Right, right, right. Um, uh, in other words, a very, very weak, comparatively weak quantum computer could, could perform more computations simultaneously than could be performed by the entire visible universe if it was all made into computers. <laughs> in fact, when I say more, that's an understatement. It's exponentially more than that. But only for certain types of computation. And that's a token of the fact that the whole notion of computation is different in the quantum computers. Mm. It's not that, like with all classical computers, you can say that one computer is 10 times as fast as the other. With quantum computers, they are vastly faster than classical computers for some computations, and the same for others. Huh. And uh, interestingly, they're not slower for any uh, 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 computations, because a quantum computer, among its abilities, is to simulate a classical computer.